Thanks, Paul. So everybody has been muted um, and uh, so that we don't have any background sounds that um, that are going to interrupt. So we have 29 devices signed on at this point. Um, so we have a good crowd. Welcome to everybody here. We're really excited about welcoming you to the new St. John's Speaker Series. And we're hoping to do this monthly. And Chris and Tez were already on the schedule last year to do a, their bird talk at the ladies' dinner at St. John's in March or April, I think. Uh, one of those two months. And of course, we couldn't in March, so we couldn't have that. Um, we were all looking forward to it. So we thought this would be a great way to kick off our first speaker series to have Chris and Tez do their uh, present their talk to us. So very excited. We're going to, um, what we're going to do um, is everybody is muted. So, um, and there's a few more people coming into the room and I think, Paul, you can admit folks as they come in. Oh. And uh, some of you might remember Edwina who did uh, retreats for us uh, a couple of times. Welcome Edwina from Erie, Pennsylvania. Hi. Carol awesome. Murphy, a good friend of mine, long time from London, Ontario. Perfect. So what uh, Tez and Chris are going to do is share their screens. So what you will see is um, most of your screen will be full of their um, what's on their screen, which is their slideshow. If you see a mouse like or cursor moving around the screen on that part, don't worry. Nothing has taken over your computer. It's uh, because you're sharing their screen. You're just seeing Tez moving the mouse around on the screen. So she might be doing that to point things out. Um, so if you if there's an arbitrary mouse movement, don't worry. You're not haunted. Um, I might do it just because I'm nervous. <laughs> so um, if you change the view on your screen to uh, speaker view, but we're going to just automatically um, tag Chris and Taz's um, uh, video. So we're going to see them principally and they're going to begin sharing their video, uh, sharing their screen. And uh, so Chris and Tez, can we hand it over to you? Thank you. Um, can we say just a bit before we go to share screen? Can they see Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Well, first we just want to thank everyone for joining us. And um, Chris, uh, I want to give her kudos for contributing not only some of the photos, but a lot of the ideas for the, the, the whole presentation. Um, her voice uh, tends to be very iffy, so I'm afraid you're going to get a big dose of me tonight. But um, <laughs> our main hope is that with all that's going on in the world, or perhaps in your lives, that, uh, that we can all just breathe easy for a little while and enjoy, enjoy some... Oh, Yes, uh, and, enjoy, and enjoy each other. And I don't know if you can see our t-shirts that well, but we just put on a couple of our favorite nature kind of t-shirts. And Chris said to me, they might think we're going to be talking about the birds and bees. So <laughs> I just, I just want to assure you, this is a family program and not to, not to worry about that. Okay, so with that, we'll uh, see if I can get this share screen going. And um, I think I will share this and hope this works or not. Okay. Oh, I'm wait a minute. I have to say, uh, what was it? I was supposed to share computer sound. Okay. Judy, I'm looking for this. And I'm not seeing where it says to Share computer sound. Okay. Um, 
Uh, it should be where the three dots are that say more. If you click on that. Oh, okay, thank you. And then pull down menu appears and make sure you've clicked share sound. I got that. Perfect. Got and then uh, go to slideshow. Yep, you've got that. Okay. We are great. We're good. So, so tonight we're just going to share with you something that we love very much. And um, I have this thing about seeing beautiful pictures of birds. We have some friends that post some on the internet that they are sharing from somewhere. One of our interests is not just the beauty of them, but knowing what they are. So uh, as we go through tonight, um, we'll show you the birds and we'll show you who they are. <coughs> so we're gonna start with, we kind of got started in birding, people ask us, and um, it really started with walking the dogs. And <clears throat> we used to walk on the Cottontail Trail just outside of town, other little trails. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh I think that was just agreeing. Oh, okay, we had some sound there, I thought. Okay. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> the only problem was, first of all, with dogs, they aren't necessarily helpful uh, in getting the bird to stay put. Um, and secondly, the initial cameras, because I don't like to just see birds, I like to get a photo. Um, we might get a bird like this, a common, fairly common bird that would stay long enough for me to get a picture. But what really changed life for us was getting a good zoom camera. And <clears throat> then we started to get, excuse me, a few really better more exciting pictures. And I just thought Zoom is great. Um, to give you an idea, mountain goats are not birds, but um, uh, this is with my current camera. It has a zoom of 83 times. And so I've already zoomed in a little on this picture. I'm standing, there's a great huge meadow before you even get to the foot of these mountains. So hopefully everybody can see there are four mountain goats inside that circle. But just in case you can't, here's the beauty of Zoom. And um, I will just say this would have been better for this kind of challenging situation when you're doing video, a tripod would have been good in this case. Um, for just a photo, I wouldn't have needed it, but so try not to get seasick with me here. <clears throat> but eventually, there you are. So there's the four mountain goats. And so that just opens up the world of possibilities uh, because you don't have to disturb the birds or the animals getting too close. You can see them from afar. Um, now, of course, I thought this was some human novelty about Zoom until we met this bird in Costa Rica. This is the bare-throated tiger heron. Costa Rica series, we're gonna describe him just like he's a camera. Two optical lenses or eyes if you prefer and equipped as it turns out with zoom. We spotted him and zoomed, but he spotted us and he zoomed and zoomed and zoomed. <laughs> love this. So um, we just quite enjoy having fun with the birds as well. And uh, so here's another photo that we took. Um, this, the saying on here is not mine, but I just thought it was gorgeous. I shall sip nectar from this flower in a silent ballet, the little gentle hummingbird. And then the same person wrote, the woodpecker. I must stab the bugs out of this tree with my face knife. <laughs> so again, this is just a way to have some fun, uh, as is this, with the birds you're seeing. Who knows what they're thinking? Sometimes it's a way to express maybe what we're thinking. But mostly, mostly we just take pictures because we enjoy the birds. So here are a few of some of our favorite photos um, that turned out, I thought, rather well. Honestly, doesn't this guy look like he belongs in a Disney animated feature? <laughs> Love this little guy. 
<clears throat> Most of these uh, we saw in South Carolina and we're just blown away. Uh, absolutely beautiful. But you don't always have to go to South Carolina. This picture, which I also happen to like, was taken in our back garden. And lots of you, well, in this part of the country, will be familiar with the cardinals uh, for sure. Now, this is what some people think of when they think of birding and photography. And uh, God bless these people. They're, I'm sure, experts, and I'm not. Um, and you, but you can get serious and I mean, get the camel things and the tripods and the cargo pockets and all of that. Um, but here's how I go birding. Uh, this, is, this is me on a heavy duty day because I've got the binoculars. I usually just have my camera. So, so here we are, this is Chrissy gearing up. And Chris, what's your gear? <laughs> Coffee mug, camera, snack bag. Yes, important. Let's go find some birds. So we're gonna take you out west now. And um, as many of you know, my mother lives in Oregon and it gives us a great excuse to drive across the country. And um, in doing so, we have identified a few favorite places. And this map shows you a bit there. We're gonna go to the Badlands over here in the vicinity of Cody, but we'll be in Yellowstone perhaps and in the Absaroka Mountains and Wrestler Roost area. Um, down to Utah, and finally over to Kansas. So into the Badlands, South Dakota. <laughs> now you see a lot of these in the Badlands, little black-tailed prairie dog. <clears throat> and, and they're lovely. But the reason that I've included them here is because their burrows are very essential for this fellow, who is a bird. And the burrowing owl actually doesn't make his own burrows. He relies on those of the black-tailed prairie dogs as a main one, but also badgers and um, a couple other burrowing animals. But other beautiful birds that we would see out there, orchard oriole, curlews. I always think of them when I get a cold and I guess I just wonder how they would manage. Beautiful lark bunting. And then on to Wyoming. The little guy singing on the post is the western meadowlark. Um, here some of you may have seen the eastern meadowlark. Very similar, but getting scarcer. One of the more um, threatened species of our day. Some other beautiful birds. Uh, here we have the Eastern Bluebird out there. They have the Western, but in this area, the Mountain Bluebird. And they have pelicans, which I always thought was an ocean thing, but pelicans are more for the ocean. White pelicans are inland. And to our great delight, one day in Wyoming, we were looking actually for a little tiny yellow warbler. And I happened to look up and these four pelicans were flying over. And honest to God, I, I swear they thought, oh, we have an audience, let's put on a show. So this is just a little fun I had um, with an inspiration I got from the pelican.
Okay, and then on into some other, uh, uh, just up the road from where we were staying in Wyoming was this family of red-tailed hawks. And uh, this just looks like mama talking to one of the two youngsters. And sure enough, do they listen? They were down here hopping on this <laughs> pile of earth and whatever. And I don't know, I think they got dirty, but anyway, they were having fun. Um, there was a river along the area where we were, and these are fairly common birds to see along a, a river. This one, not so common. Middle of the day, we were trying to actually impress our friends, Char and Jane, who were visiting with us at the time. And here was this great horned owl out in the middle of the afternoon, flew from that branch down to the edge of the river and back up to the branch. Um, we'll hear a little more about him later, but what a spectacular sight. Just in a tree very near was this fellow. We have here northern flickers, but they're golden shafted. Some other birds you might see <laughs> of this little guy. We like the little birds. They're harder to spot, but they're delightful. One of our favorite drives in this part of Wyoming is up Carter Mountain. And notice Chris the sentinel by the car. She doesn't have a camera in her hand. I've got the camera and I'm not too far away because while I'm looking for birds, such as this one and this one, she's keeping an eye out in case I need to get back to the car. <laughs> this is somebody we saw very near to there. And also, this is another bonus of birding is that you don't just see the birds, you see the beautiful scenery we're seeing, you see the collateral perks like a grizzly for goodness sake, it was absolutely spectacular. And best to see with a zoom, not close up. Another bird, it's hard to see his ruby crown, but I was so excited to get this picture. Um, beautiful birds. Uh, Again, Western birds, Clark's Nutcracker. This bird can remember thousands of places where he has buried his nuts over hundreds, potentially hundreds of miles. It's, so we were talking earlier about bird brains. This one has a really excellent one for, for memory. This bird we've known as Whiskey Jack and the Gray Jay, but uh, just as of a couple of years ago, declared our Canada's national bird, the Canada Jay. Beautiful guy. And the mountain bluebird, I can never see too many mountain bluebirds. They're just beautiful. But another surprise, looking for birds, and here were these little I was zooming in on one butterfly and all of a sudden there was a group on this muddy patch right by the side of the road. And when we did some reading up on it, this is the way butterflies take their vitamins. They actually absorb minerals through their feet uh, on damp soil. This guy was singing as we drove by. Another perk of birding. I mean, obviously he just got out of the salon and was under the hairdryer a little too long, but absolutely beautiful. Um, love birds and their sense of humor. And occasionally they just astound us with their beauty. This, this lazuli bunting was, what can you say? It's just, this is when you're glad to be alive. And as we were leaving Yellowstone, this is the one bird in the whole video I didn't label just because I liked the picture so much, but it's, it's a raven and, and an elk in case you're wondering what the other bird is, it's, <laughs> it's an elk. And then on to Utah where there's a whole nother variety of birds, um, Brewer's Sparrow. Uh, this magnificent, and we've actually seen him in Wyoming as well, but the Red Crossbill, who I also call the staple puller bird. And that's exactly what his beak is designed for, is plucking out 
the little seeds out of pine cones and it works pretty much like a staple puller. <laughs> Black-throated gray warbler. Now there's an unassuming name for a beautiful little bird who has that little yellow dot, which is a good identifier. The green in his mouth is probably a bit of either plant or a little worm. But you know, they could have called him yellow dot my eye bird or something, but anyway, there you go. The same with this one, black chinned hummingbird. Now, what do you notice on this bird? The black chin, the black cheek, the black forehead, the black head, or perhaps that stunning purple collar that he's got. But anyway, black chinned hummingbird, somebody thought of that one. Here's another beautiful little hummer, broad-tailed hummingbird. And these, these hummingbirds were flying off into this bush. And so I was trying to zoom in uh, on somebody moving in this bush. Oh, but first I had to stop and feed this guy. I forgot about this. Yeah, that was really fun. Um, but when I zoomed in on the bush, it was appropriately named a little bush tit. But the reason that I mistook him for a hummingbird is they're practically the exact same size. So this little tiny bird, little hummingbird, very exciting. I had an aunt who being very North American didn't like to say bush tit. So she called him the little bush bird. So if that makes you happier, <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, Black headed grosbeak. Uh, just a lot of gorgeous, colorful birds. The chat, flycatcher, one of the few flycatchers I could identify. They're very tricky, but lovely little birds. Um, look at the red eye on this fellow. And magnificent western tanager. And another perk. There we are out in Utah. There's nothing like watching the sunset over the canyon lands, very spectacular. But next morning, up and at them, had our little tour guides waiting for us on the road to lead us down off the mountain. Very fun little, I guess I didn't label them, but those are wild turkeys. And on to Kansas. Now Kansas, one of our iconic birds for Kansas is the little Dick Sissel. And uh, we've seen him every time we've gone through and it just makes us happy because we know we're in Kansas. And here he is welcoming us to a, a famous wetlands in the area, very important for migratory birds, including this one, the American Avocet. And they're a very pretty bird, um, even when there's two of them on three legs. And just as beautiful in the air. Other birds in the area, I mean, there are lots. These are just a few that I've managed to get, or we've managed to get uh, pictures of. The little snowy plover, he's just, he's just a little guy, but look at that beautiful black eye. And check this out. When he was three hours old, he could walk, run, swim well, and forage. There you go. Something to aspire to. Another beautiful bird we've only seen once, but it's absolutely exciting. It's got a fantastic tail. And then another, like the lazuli bunting, here's another one that just makes your heart beat fast. And you remember when we took the picture of the two people with the huge cameras? That's what they were looking for. I don't know if they found him. Yeah, but we found him they by were, the roadside. They were looking so hard to find this bird. That was here in Ontario. Where we found this bird, we just had to drive down this road and he's just at the, to the picture, just turn left a little bit. He was singing in a tree. We just stopped by the road and we were all in heaven, honestly. It was just fabulous, fabulous. Okay, now we're gonna bring you into Canada, to a couple of our favorite places. We're gonna start out west in the grasslands. 
This is our first visit ever there. You can see on the map about where we were. And the country is absolutely beautiful. And I know some people would look at this and think there's nothing there. Well, aside from the spectacular skies and more grass than I'd ever seen before and gentle rolling hills, there was lots of wildlife. Swainson's hawk, beautiful fellow. Yellow-headed blackbird. Um, in many places, there would be little puddles of water. And so you'd see birds that would opportunistically take advantage of getting a drink somewhere. We didn't get to hear this guy play the pipes, but we did see him, it was very exciting. He was just showing off there. Um, lots and lots of different birds. Horned larks, we'll see him here in Ontario later. Um, <laughs> a crow, but lots of deer as well. It seemed every time we came around another bend, we'd see some deer. A uh, beautiful yellow-eyed uh, brewer's blackbird, a little willet. And I, this guy was so huge. He's a little bigger than our red-tailed hawk um, and uh, just magnificent. And then this was a treat. Um, this is where he was actually, and I'll use my mouse here. On this rock, out in this vast field, was this beautiful chestnut colored, colored long spur. Um, and that was what they call a lifer, which meant it was the first time we'd ever seen him. So a life bird, was very exciting. And, and even the colored lichen, uh, on the rocks. I mean, look how it just adds to the to the beauty of the scene. So big highlight. Okay, now we're going to go on to uh, Ontario and take you down to Point Pelee. So uh, for those of you not familiar with Ontario, I, I'm sorry this map isn't larger, but we've got Ohio to the south of us. Just to the left of the picture is Detroit. Uh, up here towards the northeast would be Niagara Falls and um, way northeast from the top of the picture would be Toronto. And, um, and then we're here on Lake Erie. So this point uh, juts way down into the lake. And the purpose of that, Chris, well, not the purpose, but why it's such a birding hot it's spot. It's a hot spot because it's the shortest over the water um, flyway for all the birds to get down into the warmer climates so to come up in the spring yeah so spring and fall this is going to be one of the shortest places for them to cross the lake so spring especially is a popular one um, they'll fly across the lake make landfall at Point Pelee and um, and rest and regroup uh, some of them will stay some will continue on north but it is really um, an internationally renowned spot for seeing birds. And they're beautiful and they're there by the hundreds. Um, and these are just, these are just a few uh, that we met. That was one of my favorites. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are just a few that uh, we've managed to see. Um, Little tiny birds, medium sized birds, slightly larger birds. Um, there's another misnamed bird, common yellow throat, really. We call him the bandit bird. Yeah. Little warbling vireo. Um, these birds aren't only just seen at Point Pelee, obviously, but because it's such an important spot during migration there's a good chance of seeing several of them in a short space of time. And the warblers. This warbler was especially exciting to see because the first time we saw him was not in Ontario, it was in Costa Rica, which is where we took this picture. And so to think of these little tiny birds making these huge trips is quite awe-inspiring. This little guy we saw here in Point Pelee, but we've seen him in uh, South Carolina. And the last time we saw him in South Carolina, the band on him, the fellow there told us 
showed that he had come all the way from Panama uh, up to South Dakota. So I don't know if they get frequent flyer miles, but they sure make some astounding trips. And the colors, the varieties, just beautiful. Now there's one I have to admit they named pretty well. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> but I love to see him. Uh, he looks like a, an Oreo cookie made into a little crumbly. Beautiful. Yeah, that orange rivals any of your fall colors. It's just flash. And I love this guy and we'll see him around Elora occasionally in our area as well. And uh, it's always fun to catch him in a special pose, shall we say. And here's one of the most important kind of birds. <clears throat> I call this one the ever patient warbler because <laughs> I love birding with Chris and, and to me it's something to be shared. And she does share my passion, but she's also quite willing to wait while I'm trying to get a picture of the bird. So she settles down. And here's the picture she enabled me to get by waiting, was this black-throated blue warbler. He was hiding, he was in those bushes, but, but finally with a little patience, I managed to get a couple good pictures. So thank you, Chris. <laughs> and the sunsets, I mean, there's, there's just beautiful things you see when you're out birding. So finally, we're gonna, in the concluding section, how does one find these birds? Is something people ask us. Well, I think there's people that do a lot better than us, but these are just a few tips. So for me, we look everywhere, but especially where they perch. So fence posts, tree chops, branches. For example, that branch, if you look really closely, you can see the branch arches and there was a little lump on there. Sometimes those lumps turn out to be leaf birds or clump birds or rock birds. They're not birds at all. But this one, I zoomed in and it wasn't a bird. It was two birds. Great horned owls, youngsters, juveniles. Absolutely lovely. And again, I'll just point out that when you can get a picture from this distance, you're not disturbing the birds. Obviously, you can see they're not too bothered. Remember that magnificent owl we saw by the river earlier in the program? That picture of the adult owl was taken about two years after this picture and just about maybe a hundred yards up on the same riverbank. So quite possibly, this is the younger version of that other owl. So we were quite delighted to see, to see him. Okay, another tip, check out anything that seems unusual, like grocery bags stuck in trees. Um, maybe we're near a landfill. But we pulled over and we zoomed in. And when we did, we saw, for example, these two blue, birds, which are great blue herons, as it turns out, and the white grocery bags are wood storks, the first we had ever seen, building their nests, just dozens of them. It was just thrilling to see. So don't be afraid to check out anything that you see. You never know what you might find. Look beyond the expected. Here's some wild turkeys just outside Elora on a snowy field. But maybe in a snowy field, you'll see a funny little lump of snow that looks out of place. So we zoom in on a, where we can get a better look at that lump. And along with the crows, it's not snow at all. It was a snowy owl, first we'd ever seen in this area. Absolutely beautiful. And they do come around here in the winter, so watch out in those open fields. Again, look for anything that seems 
out of place, like this little funny clump. Um, it's just slightly different colored than its immediate surroundings. I was kind of afraid it was gonna be like a gypsy moth webbing nest kind of thing, but we zoom in and it was barred out. And, and again, not too disturbed by the distance we are. And finally, our tip is have patience. This, I have a lot of these kind of pictures. This is where a bird was. But sometimes, with a little patience, he comes back. And this is a, a migrant bird we only see here in uh, fall and spring usually, uh, the white crowned sparrow. And for those of you that are local, um, here's just a couple favorite places we like to go. So if you get your bearings, Elora's at the top of the picture, and we come down Middlebrook Road to Third Line, turn right and go maybe a kilometer, and there's a gravel pit on the left, but on the right there's a woods and a little, kind of a little clearing, a little opening. It's just a neat place to find a lot of birds. Um, as well, if you continue down Middlebrook uh, to where the flashing light is and there's a gravel pit on either side, um, uh, and just be aware it's an active one, so, so don't go there when the trucks are really running, but weekends are good. But there's a pond there, and uh, this is the pond, and we love to check out this spot. These are some of the regulars we'll see, one or two great blue herons, uh, the kingfisher. Uh, a few years ago, we saw the, for the first time a green heron, but this year we saw one several times. In fact, we saw two on one, a couple of occasions and in all kinds of interesting positions. <laughs> and, and when you zoom in on the wood duck, turns out there's turtles. In the background, there's a killdeer, hooded merganser. We just never know who's gonna show up there. Um, in the vicinity around town, like at the Dell, you'd see birds like this catbird. And an easy identifier besides the fact that he kind of meows um, is his beautiful dark cap and the little rusty coverts, that part under his tail there, um, which makes it easy to know it's him. Uh, kestrels are around, magnificent birds. And this year we did see a couple of the male indigos, but we saw lots and lots of the females uh, in the area again of the Dell. We call it the Dell. There's not going to be a sign there that says the Dell. We just call it that. Um, near to where that barred owl was, we saw this savanna sparrow. He has nice faint yellow eye stripes. And Anywhere in the neighborhood, you might see, especially in the countryside around here, uh, the Eastern Bluebird. Um, and maybe even in your own back garden. And for us, these are, these are joy givers. These are things to lift our spirits when we've watched the news one too many nights or um, when we just need a pick-me-up. Well, we just take a look at our friends outside. Also outside Elora, but in other parts of the country even, you may have seen these platform nests, which are typically occupied by osprey. And I'm happy to say that this year, four nests in the area, all of which were apparently in use. And um, the osprey is quite a spectacular bird. Uh, but when you're looking at their nest, don't forget to check the sky. This is from a few years ago, but I looked up and I know the picture is blurry, but the shapes were so weird. I thought, what on earth am I seeing? I assume the, the top right bird, this one is the osprey, but what on earth is that? So with a little zooming, I managed to get a picture of what turned out to be a great blue heron. 
And normally they fly floating and majestic and love. These guys were in aerial combat, um, obviously being um, territorial because they would both be going after fish, for example. But one of them is a mother and has talons. And that's the one that claimed the territory. And I'm afraid the heron had to move on a little. Another tip is you can look at the same places, but different times of year. So at the pond, for example, they get a lot of migrants. You'll see these guys only in the spring and the fall, as well as the great egrets. We discovered them coming through uh, in September, a couple of years ago. And so we check every year and sure enough, there'll be a few coming back through. And then they head on further south. Um, the white crowned sparrow, another guy just passing through. Uh, quite often in the fall, you might get a glimpse of the ruby crowned kinglet as he's passing through. Here's a guy I never expected to see just outside Elora, because this is where we saw him the first time. And where are we? Where the arrow is pointing there, we're up in Montana at the top of the Rocky Mountains. And that's the range for this bird, the American Pipit, all the, all the pink areas where he wants to go for the summer. So the yellow, where Elora is, is just passing through during migration at some point. But here he was, we're up at 10,947 feet, and there he is up there. Now, another little cool fact about these birds, they, they are perhaps the inspiration for TV dinners. You know, the frozen TV dinner and you get out and you have, well, apparently, if you think about it, there's warm air currents going up a mountain and insects rise up with the warm air currents, but when they get up in the high altitudes, it's freezing cold, they drop to the ground and are frozen and preserved in the snow. And so in the little snow banks or where it started to melt, that's where this guy finds his dinner. I think it's like somebody else does the shopping. It's great. And so here he was again. We've seen him twice now uh, right outside Elora. And I just like to think where he might be heading or coming from. Okay, another little tip how to ID these birds. So you've seen them, you've maybe got a picture. Here's just a couple little ideas. Free on the internet uh, at the App Store, or Google Play. This app called Merlin is fantastic. And if you have a photo, you can actually just load the photo and tell it where and when you saw it. And it's gonna come up probably with the right ID, but certainly a, a couple of good suggestions, which you can then check out and does that really match your bird? And someplace you can go to match it is the Audubon app. Over 800 species of birds, it's a free app. And you can have it on your phone and look up what did Merlin say your bird was or what bird would you like to know about? Or you can put in some descriptions of your bird and it'll help you figure out what you're seeing. Another great uh, local resource, and I don't work here or get any uh, bonuses from them, but we love this store, Wild Birds. There's one in Guelph, but there's franchises around the country and even in the States. A great source, um, not only for products, for bird feeders and seed and things, but for information. Staff there are very knowledgeable and their website, I just copied a bit so you can see they have articles that are useful. They have links of where you can get more information. Um, here's an example of uh, a, an article that was available. Uh, there was a study done by Cornell University, the makers of that Merlin app, and the Cornell website is fantastic. But Cornell Lab of Ornithology did this huge study and just in September, 2019. And since 1970, North America has lost almost 3 billion birds. And look at these, these are birds that you've seen in tonight's show. 
one in four blue jays lost, one in four grosbeaks, one in three orioles and white-throated sparrows and juncos. And so there are things that even as individuals we can do to help the plight of birds besides supporting organizations that help them. Um, drinking shade grown coffee because it helps preserve their habitats, reducing our use of plastic, citizen science, um, eBird is a great thing to check out online, uh, making your windows safer, putting up little decals and things so that they don't, you don't get bird strikes. Cats, I'm sorry to say, are the biggest threat to our songbirds. Um, most deaths occur from cats. And um, planting native plants and uh, avoiding the use of pesticides will all help your bird population. And you can uh, do things in your garden at home to, to make them a little more bird friendly, like the native plants. This is just a picture of our back garden. And we have a variety of trees and shrubs and flowers. Um, one recommendation in the fall is to leave your leaves um, to give a little more uh, insect and small critter uh, protection and habitat and that the birds can take advantage of for food sources. Um, not in the winter, but in the summer, we'll have our water flow, waterfall flowing and it attracts all, kind, oh, all kinds of wildlife. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist this. Um, we have a lot of wildlife there that's sort of um, petrified, but um, we do get a lot of the live birds. Almost every bird that comes into our garden will come and get some water or a shower at the waterfall. And we get the delight of seeing them and having them in our garden. Um, another thing <clears throat> to attract them is uh, different types of seed and different styles of feeder. And uh, all of these are birds that are pretty regular at our house and elsewhere in Elora. And they're all birds also that will pretty much stay year round if they have a water source and a food source. Okay, I'm just gonna point out the red-bellied woodpecker has this lovely red stripe on his head. That's the feature he's named for. Um, okay, we'll just let you, we'll just move on. Okay, um, the downy woodpecker, another visitor, lovely. The female northern cardinal, uh, that's a safflower feeder. That's one of their favorite seeds. And then in the winter, and come, we're coming into winter now, so we have a few tips for you, um, a heated bird bath. Which, which they sell. It just has a little heating element that just is, is enough to keep the water from freezing because obviously for birds to survive, they have to have some water that's not frozen solid. And this will really help attract them to your garden. So in this picture, you see we've got the, the bird bath over here on the left. We've got a feeder here that on purpose is one that spills a lot of seed <laughs> because we feed a lot of finches. They'll, they're happy to eat off the ground. They're happy to eat from feeders. We've got a little morning dove over here. So, so these last are just, all of these birds I've just shown you from our back garden are birds to keep an eye out for this winter as well. Here's the horned lark. And he's a common one to see in the winter here along roadsides and in fields, especially. Um, keep an eye out for that snowy owl and his friends. Uh, tree sparrows only come here in the winter. Uh, house finches and the, um, the red one's the house finch, this one's the winter coat of a goldfinch. Uh, those will be year-round birds. Um, if you see this in the winter, if you see it in the, in the summer or the spring or even the fall, it might be starlings or red-winged blackbirds, but, if you, but they go away for the winter. So if you see this in the winter, have a closer look. You might be getting a look at the beautiful snow buntings. And they're another one. This is their idea of coming somewhere warm for the winter. And uh, they're just the most beautiful little bird you wanna see. And uh, the red pole, he, 
I believe is here potentially year round, but certainly in the winter. Although we've not seen him a lot lately. So do let us know if you spot one because I'm not sure why we're not seeing them. The Junko uh, comes down just for the winter and we'll be looking for him and maybe he'll be looking for you. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed our sharing. We hope you have a happy winter and happy birding. And we do want to give a special thanks to everyone that helped to make this evening possible. And um, that would include Paul and Judy, our church community, and God's magnificent creation that we enjoy everywhere. Um, and I've got to give Chrissy some credits again for the photos. So thank you. And um, Judy, am I good to stop screen sharing at this point? Yes, you sure can. And we will take some questions because I'm sure there may be a few. So um, if you would like to um, if you'd like to ask a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, or you can uh, Paul's going to monitor the screen. You can also just if you don't have the chat, just wave your hand and Paul will keep an eye out for waving hands to see who might have a question that they want to ask. <laughs> Um, okay, Marguerite Cowley, waving. But I can't hear anything, Judy. Oh, hang on. I have to do something. There we go. There, can you hear me now? Yes, Got you now. Thanks. <clears throat> yes, I just wanted to thank you for such a wonderful show. It was amazing. I had no idea there were so many birds around this very area. I mean, I do, you know, watch for uh, unusual birds, but I've never seen half of the ones that you've seen. Thank you so much. I, I love the video comparing it to the airplanes. That was very clever. Well, it was, uh, you have to thank the Pelicans for that. That's absolutely what came to our mind when we saw them. It was so fun. So thank you. Thank you. And I'm just gonna point out my cousin, Chad, just cause I can see him on the screen. Thanks for joining us, Chad. It was fun, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think we're good. And thank you all for bearing with me. I did keep it uh, under an hour, which is Pretty something good. of a record, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Paul. I have a question. Um, with this past weekend, we had a windstorm with gusts up to 100 kilometers an hour. What, what do birds do in windstorms? <laughs> well, sorry, I have to laugh. I can tell you what about 50 goldfinches did. They came here and ate all our feed. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, um, we watched them. There were some, I was shocked. They were perched in the top of our tree right by our deck, just hanging on. The cardinal was in our little dome feeder and it was swaying and he was just munching and swaying. <laughs> I thought, I said to Kurt, I said, I would be hunkered down somewhere hanging on for dear life with my friends. So I'm pretty sure some birds must have done that, but the rest of them just thought, oh, it's not quite so bad at Chris and Tizzy's, so they just came and <laughs> ate till, the, you know, that's what we do in a storm, just hunker down and eat, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Well, well, not a question, but just a comment on, the myriad beautiful little creatures you've been able to photograph. That was absolutely delightful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's our pleasure. And, and thank you everyone. There's a lot of nice comments um, just uh, glancing at uh, on the side there. And um, thanks for hanging in with us. This is, um, it's just something that I think God has blessed us with to um, be able to see these birds and 
um, by capturing a few pictures, we just enjoy them again and again. And we're thrilled to share that with you. Some of you are on our mailing list and you know I do an occasional mail out of some of the latest photos. But uh, I think whatever we find in this world that gives us joy and that we can share and lift somebody else's spirits is a good thing. And we're happy to do that. And thank you for having us.